guys, I thought I'd give you an update about these predicted CMEs by Dr. Tony Phillips. In particular, this cannibal CME that he predicted would give us a 75% chance of a geomagnetic storm. Now, this was reported by Dr. Tony Phillips on the 15th of February 2014. But you would not know this if you checked spaceweather.com now because it seems that the magical white coat of NASA allows you to be able to go back and edit your information. And so anyone that has actually watched my previous video in regards to the potentially hazardous asteroid where I also was relaying this information about the cannibal CME, we'll see that on the 15th of February, Dr. Tony Phillips said that NOAA forecasters estimate a 75% chance of polar geomagnetic storms on February the 15th in response to three incoming CMEs. The first two which left the sun on February 11th, have probably merged in transit to form a single cannibal CME, more potent than either of its constituents. The third CME launched on February the 12th is following close on their heels. So according to Dr. Tony Phillips, we had a huge CME coming. It was more potent than the third CME which was following close behind and it was going to spark geomagnetic storms. However, when you actually look at the data and look at the information now on the 15th of February, you will not see any of the predictions by Dr. Tony Phillips. And you will also not see the predictions of Tony Phillips actually being fulfilled. And so therefore, this is the second time that the theory of the cannibal CME has failed to produce any results in the data because he admits that there was no geomagnetic storm from the impact of this cannibal CME, this potent cannibal CME. However, he does not explain why there was no geomagnetic storm that his theory had postulated. And it seems that with the magical white coat of Dr. Tony Phillips, you don't need to relay any further information. It still just remains fact because it is given to us by Dr. Tony Phillips and NASA. Well, unfortunately, the data is telling a different story and we did actually get quite a big impact from this following CME, but these other CMEs that Dr. Tony Phillips was speculating were these cannibal CMEs and very potent, failed to produce any results. So therefore, this model that he is relying on to explain the energy exchange between our star and our planet in regards to creating these new phenomena such as cannibal CMEs does not seem to be relayed in the data, which means it is not something that I am going to factor in to any information that I take in regards to the energy exchange that I'm seeing in regards to what the sun is doing here with x-ray flux and how it's playing out on our planet. So anyway, each to their own, you know, people can continue to rely on this type of information and channels that use this type of information to 
understand the energy exchange of our sun and our planet. However, I'm going to continue to rely on what the data is telling me. And I'm also going to continue to logically understand that the two different models of an internally powered star as opposed to an externally powered star could not possibly produce the same energy exchange between our planet and our star. And so perhaps when we start factoring into the equation, the different way an electrically powered star may exchange energy when the cycle changes with our planet, then perhaps we may start making more accurate predictions. Anyway, I just like to keep a note of these things and I will post everything underneath. And as always, peace out.